keeping social distances and uh, having a reasonable time while you're stuck indoors. So we have been looking at solutes, solvents and solutions. A solute is going to be, what is a solute? I can't ask any of you because you're not here, but I will tell you a solute is any substance which dissolves trying my best this handwriting, any substance which dissolves in a solvent. Let's keep it simple. So uh, a solute, typical solute that you might know, if you've had uh, a cup of uh, soft drink this morning, there would have been some sugar in that soft drink. The solute would have been the sugar. Um, if you've been gargling for a sore throat, you might have put some salt in the water, made it warm. Salt is a good solute. If your parents enjoy a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, the solid coffee or tea would also make a really good solute because it is dissolving in a solvent. Okay, so solutes, for all intents and purposes for now, are solids, we'll see some shortly dissolving. So what is a solvent? Well, a solvent is, any guesses class? He's still not there. A solvent is any liquid which dissolves, Ooh. best is handwriting, dissolves a solute. So that is, they both kind of define each other. If a solid dissolves in a liquid, the solid will be the solute, and the liquid will be the solvent. But when I take my sugar, or my salt, and I pop it into my solvent, where does it go? It just disappears, right? If I take salt and put it into water, there will be some little bits of salt. We can see the salt solid probably sits at the bottom. We could take a stirring rod. We could put the stirring rod in, give it a swirl. And then as if by the powers of magic, all the salt disappears. I remove my stirring rod and put the meniscus back onto my solvent. It's gone. Where did it go? I'll tell you. The solvent has dissolved the solid. Let's take our little magnifying glass and take a look at what's happening at the microscopic or molecular level. At the molecular level, this salt is still here, but now it is surrounded by, in this case, let's make the water H2O, good old fashioned water. And the water, as we know from our particle model, particle model, all of the molecules of water should be touching in random order, unlike a solid, which is in regular arrangement of atoms, as you know. The particles of solutes will dissolve or associate with the water molecules up until a certain point. We'll come to that later, okay? So water can hold lots of solute, particularly of salt. I was once told to say it like this. It's like you've got a, a, a street or a road. On the road, there might be 50 houses. Every house can have four people in it. So the street can hold 200 people. If I put 201 people in the street, one person is outside sleeping on the street. That's very much like how a solvent can dissolve a solute. 
there is a limit to how much it can dissolve, beyond which we call it saturated. But to make our solution, remember all of our solvent molecules must touch the walls of the container in which it is sat. The solute has not disappeared by the powers of magic. It is now associated with water molecules up until all the houses, if you like that analogy, it is just a model, all of them are full. You can't see them because it has dissolved. Okay, so moving on now, we seem to hopefully have in our brains solute, solvent, and solution. That's great, well done. Now we need to think about three other key terms on the learning outcomes. These are dilute, concentrated, and saturated. So, dilute, let's draw our water molecules. All molecules touching the walls of the container, that's the definition of a liquid, random order. A dilute solution might be like when, say you've been on camp and they're trying to economise and they don't give you enough squash in the water. And it tastes really weak. I've had that experience myself. There might only be four or five molecules, molecules of squash in a large volume of water. We call that a dilute solution. You dilute cordial to make orange squash. The orange squash, to continue, is concentrated. Now, it still has water as a solvent. We now know a solvent is what? Solvent is anything that dissolves a solute. Okay? If it's concentrated, there are going to be many, many more molecules of solute within the solvent making a solution. So if it asks you to draw and compare two different beakers containing A, a dilute solution, and B, a concentrated solution, if you draw something along these lines and say that the pink dot is the solute and the blue circles are the solvent. So we have dilute and concentrated. The final thing we need to have is, do you remember earlier when I was talking about the houses in the street? And I think I said there are 50 houses and there are four people in each house, so the street can hold 200 people. Those houses are not houses, obviously, it's a model. These houses are water molecules. I could draw 200 pieces of solute, but I'm not going to. Let's say this water can only hold 10 molecules of solute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. After which all the houses are, are full, or better, all the water molecules have been used up in a process called, and this is what the top grades, solvation. So the solvent has interacted with the solute and it is now solvated. If we add more than the water can hold, what will happen is it will no longer dissolve and you will see solid solute at the bottom of the solution. So saturated means it just can't hold anymore. Okay, so now I'm going to put increasing amounts of a solute that we call cobalt chloride into the common solvent, which uh, we all call H2O or water. My lovely technician knows me well and has left a big spill tray at the bottom of this experiment just to hopefully catch all the bits as I drop them. So this is uh, nice for a couple of reasons. Reason number one is it's purple. That's always a good thing. Purple's always a great thing. Um, the other thing is it's, it's highly toxic. So that adds a little bit of pizzazz 
to proceedings as well. And hopefully, what I have qualitatively, qualitatively, that means without measuring, achieved is increasingly concentrated solution. So we'll just give each one a little stare. We can see that this one has a very faint uh, purple tinge to it. This one, as I agitate the solute to get it into the solvent to make the solution is darker. And all you lovely people with fantastic predictive abilities can see obviously that the other reason I used cobalt chloride is that it's very visible that an increase in concentration, which is amount of solute in the solvent, is patently obvious when you have a coloured compound because you have a clear gradation, a clear increase in intensity of the colour purple. Welcome back and over to you. This is a challenge based activity on the separation techniques that we've been learning at school. Okay, this is shared with you in the Google Classroom. Encouragingly, you are just here. You're on the edge of a desert island. Thankfully, you have some good things. Also, thankfully, this happens to uh, on your way to a lifetime holiday. Your plane ran out of fuel and had to ditch into a very dry and barren part of central Australia. You managed to escape the wreckage unharmed, which is good, and were able to salvage some bits and pieces from the crash debris. You can be quite happy because you do have a satellite phone, but unluckily, help will not arrive for at least a week, so you need to look after yourself in the interim. Food's okay, and you've also got a pair of socks, uh, some tubing, some coffee filter paper, just the same as the filter paper we use in the laboratory, a Swiss army knife, 50 meters of rope, a tin bucket, plastic drinks bottles, and a packet of matches. So your challenge is this. In the hot sun, without shelter, you will become dehydrated very quickly. You can last about three days without water, about three weeks without food, and about three minutes without oxygen. It's hot, you're going to need a drink, and all you've got is this muddy lake, which is next to you. So with your kit, with your pieces of equipment, you need to work out a plan. You need to describe how you will collect and transport the water. Don't forget, water is heavy. Water is really heavy. Um, if you ever carried a few litres of water, it's an easy sum to make because water has a density of one gram per centimetre cubed. That means a thousand centimetres cubed, which is one litre, will have a mass of 1,000 grams or one kilo. So if you have 10 litres of water or five bottles of uh, soda, that's 10 kilos. That's quite a lot. So how are you going to collect it and transport it? How are you going to get the big bits out? This is the bits of twig and insects, uh, large bits of uh, gravel. A filter paper will become blocked very quickly and become useless, as you probably experienced in the laboratory. Um, you need to think about, is water an element, compound or mixture? We've done elements, compounds and mixtures. Water has two hydrogen and one oxygen atom in one molecule of water. Let's have a think about that. You need to filter out the tiny bits. Uh, congratulations if you got that far. How are you going to get rid of the small bits of water? And then you're going to end up with something looking like this glass on the left of my screen. I wouldn't drink it, would you? No, certainly not. We need to get rid of the tiny bits and very soon even some of the tinier, tiniest, tiniest bits. So how would you get rid of these things? You need to draw a particle diagram and explain how that is useful in working out or removing 
some of the very small and even microscopic particles in this dirty water. Draw your diagram. Uh, think, is your filtrate a mixture, a solution, or both? And how can you tell? It is both because it's still a mixture, it's not pure. Okay. Now your water's looking quite clear by now, but you can't drink it. There's all sorts of bugs and microorganisms that could be in there. Um, and most of them are invisible. So the only way to ensure your safety, in the olden days before we had, um, I wasn't alive then, ha ha, but in the really olden days, hundreds of years ago, they didn't have water treatment. And the people that didn't get sick are the people that boiled their water or drank beer is the other one because the alcohol kills the bugs as well, but you're not old enough to do that. Um, so how would you use the equipment that you have, the tubes and the bottles and things, to distill your water? You need to go on to carry on to purify your water, answer the questions as you go through. I think that's enough assistance to set you off on your way. You should download a copy of this document, uh, complete the uh, boxes, and then share it with me so I can have a look at your efforts. Okay? Best of luck. Please go and wash your hands regularly. Keep a safe distance from everybody else and be well. Okay? You are missed. We'll see you back at school soon, guys. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.